Now we know it's been done already, but come on, in fairness, we thought about doing this a long time ago. It just takes a while for stuff to ship. From my Discord. You guys loved our Amazon and Monoprice PC build so much that we couldn't resist the urge to do it again, but with a Six sketchier twist. So uh, computers strap on computers. guys, because I can pretty much guarantee that this is not gonna go according to plan. Speaking of unplanned, I should have planned a better segue to our sponsor. Cooler Tweak Tips. Get the most out of your PC today by joining my Discord. Link in the description. Welcome to the first Cooler Tweak Tips Discord overview. I'm finally making a video explaining most of the useful tweaks that I've documented. If you're interested in a specific tweak, you can look at its dedicated channel in my server. I'm not a master of these methods or programs and I can always be wrong about something. We're gonna talk about how to upscale more conveniently, get sick look in the renders, resample the FFmpeg, use OBS like Shadowplay and a lot more. Alright, so let's start off with FFmpeg Batch. So it's a software you can use to easily manipulate your videos using FFmpeg. Instead of using .bats and renaming your videos to input.mp4, you can save your own upscaling, color correcting, resampling presets and easily apply them on your videos. By the way, in the settings, make sure you use GPU decode to CUDA if you have an NVIDIA card input container output to MP4. And I should also mention that I have found a way to use uh, NVENC to upscale to 8K, so it's actually not that slow compared to X264. Flow frames is what I've used to make these never seen before renders. To make it simple, it's a video interpolation program. This means you can drag in a 360 FPS clip and multiply the frame rate by 2. 4 or 8 times. It's not perfect, and if you do it with a low FPS clip, there will be imperfections, even though it doesn't look as bad as RSMP. One important thing to note is that it's really slow and that there is an FPS gap of 1000, but you can bypass it by slowing down your video to 10% speed so the FPS is divided by 10. Then you can interpolate it without any problem and put it in Vegas. You can speed the clip back up in Vegas by right clicking it on the timeline, select insert slash remove envelope and select velocity. Then drag in the green line all the way up to 1000%, then cut the clip to its original length, so 1 tenth since you slowed it down to 10%, and voila, you can render this clip and have plenty of blur frames. Vegas is cool for rendering, but there's also great ways to get nice resample on your videos. FFmpeg has a feature called T-mixing, which is very similar to resample. Here's what it looks like. You need the value after t-mixing to be equal to the number of blur frames your video should have. To get it, you simply need to divide the FPS your video was recorded in by the FPS you want to render it in. For example, 360 divided by 60 gives 6. Credits to Alfie for showing me this. P.S. Don't forget to use FFmpeg batch for this. This one is going to be really useful for everyone who needs to sort their clips. Lossless streaming is a tool that uses FFmpeg to manipulate videos. Here is some of what it can do. Cut and get multiple parts of a video in individual files, merge multiple clips together, all of this in seconds. It barely takes any time because it does not need to re-encode the video. I recommend the keyframe cutting. This means you don't have any glitches while trimming, but you can only trim at a specific spot every second. This is made this way because of how video compression works. For the Vegas and OBS settings, I don't think there's anything interesting regarding them. You can take a quick look at them if you want though. Here's a few less common tips for OBS. You can control a lot of the buttons in OBS with keybinds. Try going in hotkeys and messing around with them. You can also see in Task Manager how much invention is being utilized to compare your OBS settings. One really underrated feature of OBS is the replay buffer. It acts like shadow play. You can save the last 15, 30 seconds of minute of what you've been recording, only saving what you need. I use that on 20 seconds and I save it whenever I get a combo. So much easier to edit with this. Having a lot of long recordings means a lot of disk space being used and having to go through every single one of them to filter them. You can turn on replay buffer on in output and make sure you set a keybind for it in hotkeys. You can debload windows as much as you want, but the biggest performance gain you'll get is by making sure you use these certain settings. To start out with Optifine, you should always have fast render on. This helps frame rate a lot and people tend to forget about it. You can also use dynamic updates, which loads chunks faster when you're still, useful for loading PvP arenas. You should also try having higher render distance. Your FPS will be lower in general, but you'll get less lag spikes from loading chunks mid-fight. Smooth FPS should only be turned on if you have more in-game FPS than you actually need. It will reduce your GPU utilization by a lot and tank your FPS, 
but it will be easier to record with OBS. A lot of Linear mods can reduce your FPS from 10 to 40% if you have a lot of them. Make sure you disable everything you don't need. Here's a list of what I consider to be the essentials. You only need to turn on FPS, CPS, free look, saturation, potion effects and toggle spinch. You will also get more frames by disabling the scoreboard and chat, but it's hard to live without them. This tweak won't help you as much with performance, but can be useful with deep loading windows. There's also a few handful settings you can turn on and off using the script. It's from an American YouTuber called Chris Titus Tech, which makes interesting tech guides in the description. You can run the script easily by pasting this in PowerShell. If you're curious or cautious about what it does, you can open the git.io link to inspect it. The Essential Tweaks button will run OWNO Shutup 10 and remove every Windows Store apps installed by default except Xbox and the store itself. Other stuff you can do with it, to spend every Windows update except the security ones, remove Core 29 OneDrive, turn on Global Dark Mode and Light Mode, or remove Visual Window Effect. Here's some extra things you can do to get some more performance. Turn on XMP in the BIOS, very low risk for big performance difference, especially in runs on Ryzen CPUs. Sharklady is a program that allows you to automatically download and install all the programs you need on a single command line. This saves a lot of time when you've just installed Windows. To install it, open PowerShell in admin and paste this in. Here's a little list of, no of known programs you can install using Choco. Google Chrome, Discord, Everything, Paint.net, FFmpeg, Minecraft, VLC and Steam. I've made a bunch of original overlays that you can add on top of your favorite PvP packs. I've called them Overlay with a free so it's easy to search and sort them in your pack list. The first one is Operation Black Sky, which makes the sky completely black. I've gotten used to it and it has its own perks. Since it's a single color, it makes it easier for OBS to encode. Overlay Clean UI is a pack I made to make the inventory UI invisible as well as the hotbar. Overlay Fireless makes fire invisible. Yeah, that's, pre that's pretty much it. Overlay Block is a generic block overlay. G looks good. Credits to Ricardo for the blocks. Overlay Block Black and White is the same block overlay I just mentioned, but in black and white. I don't really know if it helps with OBS settings or not. If you enjoyed and learned a lot of stuff, don't hesitate to share this. My content is free and that's the best way for you guys to help me back.